Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for connecting on today's class. We will pray and uh, get into the rest of the chapters from uh, the Book of Acts. So uh, I'd like to request one of us to please lead with a word of prayer. Anyone? Holy Father, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for teaching us all through last three and a half months through your servant law. Thank you for teaching us on that accent like a Paul. Lord, help us to emulate this truth in our, into our lives, Father, into our ministry. What you have learned in this class, Lord, it may work effectively in our lives very minister in this world. We give you all the glory. We thank you and even praise you even this morning now. We commit pastor into your hand. Another of the spirit. Speak to us, Lord. Wonderfully. So that our life will be touched. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless every one of us who is connected, who will be connected to this class. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Mano, for leading us. Uh, we have been talking about the trial of Paul now. And my intention was really to complete uh, the chapters. Uh, but then I realized that uh, it is a little bit of a, a rush. So uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, I do plan to complete it if uh, it works out. But if it doesn't, we still have. Um, uh, the next week's sessions with us so we'll we'll see how it goes you know really don't want this to be um, just about finishing the the portions so uh, let's begin from where we stopped I think we had uh, uh, started with acts 23 and we saw how uh, the commander when he witnessed this uproar against Paul in Jerusalem now in uh, Paul had gone to Jerusalem at the end of his third missionary journey. And one of the reasons why he had actually gone there was, of course, to worship, because that was part of the culture uh, of uh, even the apostles, the leaders of the church at that time. But in addition to that, you know, as the church leaders of Jerusalem suggested to Paul, they mentioned to him that uh, uh, he had a reputation for discrediting and dishonoring the rules and laws of the Jews. So they felt that if Paul can take this additional step to go, and there were certain men who had vowed to God, and uh, you know, if Paul could pay for their vows and just support that tradition which these four men were keeping, that somehow this will, uh, this will, I lay all the wrong notions that people had about Paul, that he was discrediting the Jews and he was siding the Gentiles. So for that reason, now Paul went up for prayer. Paul went up for the um, ritual to the temple in Jerusalem. But as soon as he went there, you know, he also had, um, uh, he was quite well known by then. He, he was well known for his work in the nearby regions of the Roman Empire. And suddenly, you know, people noticed that uh, one of Paul's team members was an, a an Ephesian. Okay? He's an Asian person. And so they felt that Paul is actually bringing in uh, non-Jews into the temple and defiling the temple. So with this began the uproar against him. And uh, soon, you know, it, it was chaos. Uh, to the extent that you know if somebody had not intervened in the situation uh, paul is being accused he would have been beaten and who knows he, he could have even been murdered uh, under this mob violence but thankfully the commander of that time comes in we've seen this in other places as well even in ephesus we've seen it in corinth uh, where if there is a disorder in a province, in a in a city, in a, a region, immediately, you know, the um, in the Roman Empire, like they would kind of uh, begin to rule over that place from the center, 
and so the local leaders did not want that and so they will try to bring a calm and that's exactly what they tried doing even in this uproar in jerusalem and so the commander takes charge of paul and uh, you know he he wants to take him away but at that point you know paul requests and he says okay can i please speak to the uh, people here in hebrew so he begins to speak in hebrew so then there's that connecting factor and he starts to narrate his story of what exactly happened so it's a very beautiful uh, passage when we talk about the life of apostle paul uh, it's it's not like we have everything about his beginnings his background his work uh, in in one section you know or one uh, particular uh, book of the bible or, or or anything like that we have to actually get the pieces of the puzzle and begin to paint a picture so in chapter 21 we saw earlier on in acts chapter 9 luke wrote you know about the whole journey about his persecution and and, and all that and uh, how exactly you know he encountered jesus on the road to damascus but acts 21 is another passage where you get some more pieces of uh, paul's journey so he narrates it and he says you know that he was actually a jew uh, uh, but then he he uh, was touched by the call of jesus and he began to serve according to the call on his life and he explains he goes to the point where he says that he began to share this word to the gentiles okay so that's the point where the crowd is unhappy with him because their perception of paul in the first place was that he was defiling the temple by bringing in non jews and now you have paul mentioned gentiles so they are very upset and you know once again they are intending to uh, tear him up but thankfully you know again because of the commander they decide that he needs to be brought out protected and in the roman empire at that time they had different kinds of uh, um punishments for people who were under their custody and many of them um they they would just use their authority without without uh, being in line with the given law so in this case you know paul is accused but he's not convicted so they don't have the right to treat him like a convict but they uh, uh, scour scourging is what we read so scour scourging is a way of beating up the uh, the prisoner with whips and in the roman context you know beating up somebody uh, with scourgings was so bad that during those scourgings people would die okay so we can imagine what paul was actually going through so he was in that situation but you know he uh, has the wisdom of god in his life and he reveals to the uh, person or, or or the in charge over him that he is actually a roman now this had many implications a roman citizen could not be beaten up without convictions like they really needed a proved reason why they wanted to punish the prisoner so when the person in charge heard this he ran to the commander and he explained and he said oh look he is saying that he is a roman citizen now what do we do because it's illegal for us to beat up a roman citizen and at that point you know the commander comes to enquire and he uh, is amazed he is wondering how in the world uh, is this individual you know he how did he get roman citizenship because roman citizenship was very expensive to be purchased and if you were to go any other route to get your roman citizenship that also was extremely difficult so the people who had roman citizenship at that time were uh, you could say uh, privileged or uh, lucky or uh, uh, you know sort of the 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 uh, cream of of the society who could easily get 
the citizenship. So they uh, began to wonder. So the commander began to wonder, you know, how did Paul, how did this prisoner, how did this, uh, uh, you know, man who has so many people opposing him get the Roman citizenship? But that was enough for the commander to feel insecure about what he had done. He had already beaten up Paul, uh, which could work against him. And so uh, he really needed to now figure out how do we how do we resolve the matter? OK, how do I escape the scene uh, to ensure that, you know, I am not ill treated by the, uh, the highest authorities of the Roman Empire? So you know, he comes up with this with this idea. He feels that, OK, now that, uh, you know, uh, I'm in this situation. Let me just wash my hands off and have Paul sent somewhere else. And that way, you know, it, it, it basically uh, the ball is no longer in my court. So I'm no longer responsible. I just did the initial protecting, uh, you know, a person from, from mob violence. Now, whether he is uh, really a perpetrator of some sort of a crime, whether he is the um, he he will be convicted by the accusations which are brought by the Jews that is another question, and so he um, writes to the governor of uh, the province uh, at that time, the Judean province, and he uh, plans to send you know Paul to that place. Now before doing this, he did try to call for. Uh, an assembly of the Sanhedrin because he thought that, OK, that might bring this issue to a conclusion. All these learned and uh, reputed people in the Sanhedrin, maybe they can take a call of whether or not the accusations are true about him. So that's when you know, Acts 23 um, uh, started. And we saw how, as he was brought into uh, the um, council, when he made a statement, he said, uh, I'm in all good conscience before God until this day. You know, that was a statement which was quite provocative for the uh, listeners because obviously, if there's an individual who has good conscience before God and people, he's blameless. And so when Paul made a statement like that, it was, uh, um, uh, how would you put it? it? It was like telling the people in authority that I'm already, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. And so that made Ananias the high priest very angry. And, uh, you know, Ananias, he gives an instruction and says, strike him on his mouth for a comment like this. And when uh, Paul is hit, you know, he, uh, of course, um, gets very upset and he addresses this high priest as the whitewashed wall. OK, so uh, that shows his anger and his rage at that point for, you know, without reason, how can they they do things like this? And later, he realizes that the person who gave that order was actually the high priest. But you see, actually speaking, we can dwell many hours you know, study line by line, you know, as we are told that scripture, all scripture is God inspired. And uh, that in all of scripture, you know, we can receive something for ourselves, you know, something to impact our spiritual walk with the Lord, whether it's correction, reproof, instruction. So, so many things we can actually receive from scripture. So over here, one more thing that we notice is verse 5 of chapter 23, Paul says, I did not know, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, you shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. So it really goes to show us that here is a man who is doing the best that he can to live by the scriptures. OK, was he perfect? I don't think so. And you know, human being is perfect. Even when we talk about Apostle Paul, at the end of the day, he was a human being. 
but look at his heart that when he recognizes okay i accuse the high priest i did not know he is the high priest but we've been taught that we should not have an accusation against somebody who is in leadership he's willing to repent he's willing to repent okay so that is the beauty of it that he, this man and you will begin to notice later that paul's trial if he was guilty it could have ended in a moment it could have ended in jerusalem or it could have ended right under the hands of the commander but why this confusion why handing him you know from one place to the other and saying okay you decide no no you decide you decide because even by the law and in this case you know before the commander sends him to cesarea you have high priest people who are aware of the scriptures even they are not able to concretely bring something up against paul so it just goes to tell us that as a believer and even as a leader and paul writes about this in so many other places give no offense give no offense to the jews or the churches of god he say i do my best to live the right kind of life to have the right conscience whether it is before god or with it is before men and when he knows that what he probably did just now was not in line with god's word you know accusing a leader among the people he is repentant of it and then you know later on you know we saw how he had to escape the situation so he recognizes okay part of the sanhedrin you had the pharisees the sadducees and the bone of contention obviously is the issue on resurrection so he just says look what did i say i was just talking about you know um uh, i believe in resurrection uh, and i don't think it's wrong you know something like that so when he said that the pharisees took his side because he was a pharisee at some point in his life and then of course you know the sadducees opposed it and there was even more chaos the kind of chaos that the commander had rescued him from in jerusalem you know he's trying to rescue him uh, over here also um, with the sanhedrin council as the audience so that was unfortunate though so uh, thinking about you know thinking about what exactly uh, paul must have felt at this point two things one is he would have felt relieved that he escaped uh, being being uh, it's not he was not afraid of being convicted because he had not done anything wrong but he realized that getting a fair trial that was not assured okay he was quite clear about that which is why he needed a way to get out of this council they were definitely not going to give him a fair trial so paul was not afraid of being convicted but neither was he convinced of a fair trial so it's a sticky situation so to get out he brought this matter of resurrection and he comes out of it but you know what being the person that paul was the passion which he had to share the gospel maybe maybe he would have felt in both of these instances that i missed an opportunity remember what was his passion he went around you know as you as you look at the number of cities that paul traveled at least 40 different cities he went to how would he manage to you know make that journey unless he carried that fire in him to uh, preach about jesus and let people know about jesus he definitely carried that fire and there was a promise on his life that he would be a speaker of the gospel um, uh, to the gentiles as well as leaders isn't it so that was a promise on his life he did get an opportunity in the temple to talk to the jews the jewish audience 
and part of the Jewish audience would have been influencers. And now this was uh, an incredible opportunity standing in front of the Sanhedrin where he could preach about Jesus. But both of these opportunities were, in a sense, missed by Paul because there was no conclusion. Right? There was no conclusion. He was not able to really bring them to a place where he could give them a call and say, OK, do you believe in Jesus? This is who Jesus is. He is the Christ. And uh, you know he paid for our sins, and he bought our redemption. So this is how it went. And now, uh, there is a plot against Paul. And I think Christopher read this passage, if you all remember. So shall I just explain it uh, instead of uh, reading it again? I think we read from verse 11 to verse 22. Uh, so I'll just share what is in this uh, in this portion. Uh, now every verse, you know, is very rich with uh, revelation. Even as we start with verse eleven, okay. So we've now seen Paul has escaped the commotion of the Sanhedrin. Okay, what next? He should have been happy that you know that that situation of persecution. He was able to come out of that. But in the night, okay, it seems like, like any other human being, Paul was also under much stress. He was under anxiety. Because verse 11 says, But the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. Okay. Now, when does God say, "Be of good cheer"? Uh, anyone? Any? Any opinions or any ideas? Why would God need to say, "Be of good cheer"? Or when have you seen in in passages of Scripture of God saying, "Be of good cheer"? Uh, yes, say. Uh, one very good example was Joshua. Uh, where God told him that he should not be afraid, that he should be of good courage. So we see a similarity here between Paul and Joshua, because Joshua is about to take upon a leadership role that was bigger than him. And um, for Paul here, for Jesus to have appeared to him, we usually don't see this, you know, we've not seen this in a while, uh, reading through scripture. But for Jesus to have appeared to Paul, it shows really that, you know, he must he must have been in fear, anxiety. And again, it goes to show, again, his humanity, just like you pointed that he's still a human being. Most times when we talk of Paul, we talk about him as a super Christian, as if he's not also someone like us you know kind of but who grew in his faith and did miraculous stuff so basically this was um, a time that he was most likely perplexed and the lord jesus christ appeared and encouraged him which he does for every one of us when we are in our down moments thank you yes uh, thank you uh, say for sharing and there are uh, some comments here on our chat Kung says, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus telling his disciples. Kennedy says, when undergoing trials. Yeah, so you know, God is so faithful that he brings a word of encouragement when we most need it. Earlier, even in Corinth, you remember there was an uproar against him. People were uh, shouting and screaming in the amphitheater. And Paul was hearing these words. It would have created you know, a lot of fear within him. And that's when God actually comes to him and says, you know, I have many people in this city. It's not just you. So be strong. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you, Paul. And God is faithful, whether it was a Joshua or the disciples of Jesus or Paul, the apostle. And, you know, we can, we can come up with uh, so many other places where encouragement has come one or the other way. But God is faithful and he knows our humanity. And you see how Apostle Paul needed an affirmation. 
and god himself it says the following night the lord stood by him and said now he would have been under a lot of tension stress anxiety remember he was scorched you know a few days earlier so his body was in pain he had a burning passion for the gospel in his heart you know so many things are going here by her and uh, he definitely needed that word from the lord so the lord stood by him it says so encouraging so encouraging so the lord stood by him again we can talk so much about it what does it mean did he see a vision did he have a dream did he actually see the lord jesus physically uh, next to him we can speculate but the lord stood by him and said be of good cheer paul having heard your own name so personal god is saying okay i know you i know you what what you're going through paul for as you have testified for me in jerusalem okay see what could have been encouraging for god to say you will no longer have any difficulty paul i'll remove all persecution no god didn't promise that because that is the prophecy which he received isn't it chains await chains await me as i you know go towards jerusalem and also agabus he said the man who uh, whose belt this is he would be bound so paul knew all these trials everyone said don't go don't go paul don't go jesus is also not saying i am re removing the persecution from you he never said that but he said be of good cheer what does he add to encourage you have an assignment waiting for you till that so what does it imply jesus gives him a clue there he says as you have testified for me in jerusalem so you must also bear witness at rome so then paul knows i'm not going to die till i go to rome however long that is so let these people do whatever they want to do at least i know that god is giving me more ministry god is entrusting me with more work okay so you know the the blessing for the faithful is more work or more assignment because the person who gave the work knows that it will get done and so they are willing to give more work and that's what jesus is saying he's saying you testified for me in jerusalem you must also bear witness at rome paul there is more work for you to do you have a greater assignment you have to go to rome till that time nothing is going to happen to you so don't worry okay so it's it's like telling him it's not over till it's over and so paul is encouraged and then you know we saw later on that uh, uh, apparently there was a set of 40 assassins who were passionate about murdering paul and they were getting ready to do that they had taken a vow saying uh, you know either paul dies or we die and they were they had started fasting because they took an oath they said we will not eat or drink till we have killed paul so this kind of uh, uh, you know a uh, plot was against paul rising up in jerusalem and paul had no idea but you see the grace of god paul's nephew it says paul's sister's son he heard about this plot uh against paul and he goes and tells paul uh, paul immediately you know let's uh, uh tells his nephew why don't you go and inform the commander you know, who is who is uh, in charge of me and you know let's see what the commander does uh, and so when he went and told the commander that's when the commander decided that okay this guy needs to be handed over now it's not safe anymore for paul to be here in jerusalem so let's make a plan and let's send him away to caesarea and then you know a letter is written to be sent to uh, felix now felix is the governor of the judean province at that time 
and uh, he was in Caesarea, uh, and which is why you know Paul was packed off to Caesarea. So the commander writes a letter. Um, he um, from verse twenty three. Now I think it it might be helpful for us to read. Can somebody please read verses twenty three to verses thirty five of Acts twenty three? Pastor, can I read? Yes, yes, brother. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen threesome and ten, and spearmen two hundred at the third hour of the night, and provide them beasts that they may set Paul on bring on and bring him safe unto unto Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter after this manner, the Cla Claudius Lys 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 Lysas, unto the most excellent governor, Felix sendeth greeting. This man was taken off of the Jews and should have been killed of them. Then I came, then came I with an army and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known that known the cause wherefore they accused him i brought him forth into the unto this council 20 till 28 uh no till the end of the passage okay okay thank till 35 sure. no yeah. okay whom i perceive to be accused of questions of their law but to have nothing laid to laid to his charge worthy of death or the or of bones and when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man. I sent straightway to thee and gave command, commanded to his accusers and also to say before thee what they had against him, the farewell. Then the soldiers, as it was, command them, took Paul and brought him by night to anti, an, anti Patris. On the on the morrow they left the horsemen to go with him and return to the castle. Who then who when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor presented Paul also before him. Yes, Pastor. Oh, sorry. Oh, and when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was, and when he understood he was of Cilicia. I will hear thee, and I will he I will hear thee, said he, when thine accusers are also come, and he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. Thank you. Uh, thank you, brother. Uh, so here we we've seen how the commander is now going to transport. Paul safely so that uh, these 40 men you know don't uh, are not able to accomplish the oath that they have taken one of the primary reasons is now whether Paul is a blasphemer or not that we will we will um, you know these these governors and leaders will figure out under trial but one key thing which made everyone shudder is he's a Roman citizen okay and uh, you could not treat uh, a Roman citizen illegally. And that was the reason you know, they wanted to make sure that he was safe and alive before uh, an accusation could be proved against him. So the commander, uh, sort of in a, in a rush, you know, he packs him off. He has 200 foot soldiers. Why 200 foot soldiers? It is said that uh, till that place, right, Antipatris, uh, there were, it was, there were, people who would just um, kill with the sword uh, you know e even if uh, people were walking through that region many would get murdered so it was very unsafe for for various reasons uh, and they did not want anything to happen to paul so they made sure one is send foot soldiers to keep him safe and transport him by night so that you know those 40 men have no idea uh, and he wrote a letter to the governor Felix uh, and he wanted to send away 
Paul to Caesarea. So that's that's what uh, you know we have seen so far. So now Paul is handed over, and now when Felix has to make, so it was quite easy. Felix, based on the inputs that he had, because he's an ex person in authority, he could have made a decision. And said something like, "Okay, Paul, you are innocent," or "Paul, you are guilty." But knowing a little bit about Felix, the governor, it is said that he was a very corrupt man, uh, and uh, he was wanting to sit on the fence. We will see in the next chapter that he will drag the trial of Paul for up to two years because he had an expectation from Paul. as a corrupt governor he wanted you know maybe some money uh, so if paul would have given him money who knows he he would have let him uh, uh, out of the prison but for that reason you will see that felix will just drag the case he says okay you're from silesia that means that okay uh, it's it's kind of a related region so we can judge over this case but we'll do it slowly we'll see we need proper evidence uh, investigation so you know you have some people like that right just drag it even if you can make a decision so felix being the corrupt governor that he is you know he uh, uh, sort of uh, thinks of um, getting some money out of paul okay say you have something to say Yes, Pastor. Uh, I did. I I just had an observation. It's not really in line with what we're talking about, but I just thought we should take a cue from Paul. You know, Jesus had appeared to him, encouraged him. Is he finds out about the Jewish leaders plotting to kill him? I mean, a radical Christian would have said, "Jesus has promised that I will go testify. I don't need to fear anything." but he takes advantage of the fact that there are things in the nature that the lord has provided for us you know to be able to get to wherever we are going safely or accomplish whatever he has given us to do i just wanted us to draw a balance here that even if god has already promised it doesn't mean that we should just be careless about our lives this is paul here we are learning from he tells his nephew to go inform the soldiers and he gets protection you know uh, look at the number of soldiers that had to escort him you know to Caesarea so this just goes to show that there are things in the natural that we also need to do on our own side with the backing of Christ you know with us in whatever thing the lord has actually um called us to do i, I just thought i'd withdraw that and balance and lesson from paul thank you yes thank you say thank you for that uh, observation uh that's very true okay sorry everyone um so one of the things uh, that we can learn as you rightly pointed out is paul or the other believers for that matter did not you know take on persecution did not take on um an unsafe environment to prove the the uh, strong conviction of their faith they did in other words it's like uh, walking into a lion's den and saying you know i believe god will protect me they never did things like that so even here knowing that god will protect him and that he still has you know to go till rome uh he could have been careless but he wasn't you know he was uh, careful enough to escape the scene and uh, now he is with felix so let's now begin to read uh from acts 24 and see what happens under the custody of felix okay so uh, let's uh, read from verse 1 till 
was uh, 21, please, anyone? Quite, quite long, but uh, if you can read, that would be good. Yes, Asha, please go ahead. And after five days, the high priest Ananias came down with some elders and spokesmen. One territories they laid before the governor the case against Paul. When he had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Since through you we enjoy much peace, since by your forest sites, most excellent Felix reforms are being made for this nation. In every way and everywhere, we accept this with all gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you in your kindness to hear us briefly. For we have found this man of plague, one who stirs up riots among all the Jews throughout the world, and in him, and is a ringleader of the sect of the Nazareth. He even tried to profane the temple, but we seize him. By, by examining him you, yourself, you will be able to find out from him about everything of which we accuse him. Then she is also joined in the charge, affirming that all these things were so. When the governor had nodded to him to speak, Paul replied, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation, I cheerfully make my defense. You can verify that it's not more than 12 days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem, and they did not find me disputing with anyone or stirring up a crowd, either in the temple or in the synagogue or in the city. Neither can they prove to you what they now bring up against me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I worship the God of our fathers, believing in everything laid down by the law and written in the prophets, having a hope in God, which this man themselves accept that there will be a resurrection of both the just and the unjust. So I always take pains to have a clear conscience toward both God and man. Now, after several years, I came to bring alms to my nations and present offerings. While I was doing this, they found me purified in the temple without any crowd or tumult, but some Jews from Asia. They ought to be here before you and to make an accusation. Should they have anything against me or else, let this man themselves say, what wrongdoing they had found when I stood before the council. Other than this one thing that I cried out while standing among them, it is with respect to the resurrection of that that I am on trial before you this day. Yes, thank you, Asha, for reading <clears throat> this entire section. So now we know that um, Paul is with Felix and he can make a decision. However, Felix invites Ananias, the high priest, if you recall, this was the high priest, you know, who had ordered for Paul to be um, uh, hit on his mouth. So why is Felix, Felix doing this? Basically, he is trying to get more evidence. He's trying to investigate the case uh, in, a, in a more holistic manner. So he wants the opinions of every side and all of that. So he invites, you know, Ananias, uh, the high priest, and he comes down with the elders. But during those times, in trials, they would also have, um, it says orator here, but more like a lawyer so you know there was somebody to speak the uh, offensive against paul by the name of tertullus and you know he puts out this whole um, uh, he he puts out his uh, issue with paul uh, but you know he begins by doing his you know usual usual way of um, uh, flattering the governor so he says so many things like uh, we have enjoyed great peace and prosperity, um, you know, which was brought to this nation by your foresight. So it's all like a way of a learned way of talking, you know, during those days. And no wonder this this man Turtles was an orator. So he begins that way, and then he starts to share that Paul uh, in verse five he says. We have found this man a plague, a creator of dissension among all the Jews 
throughout the world and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So, Paul is being accused of someone who brought about division, dissension, confusion. And notice, he says, ringleader of the sect of Nazarenes. So there's no connection of Nazareth to Paul, except that he follows Jesus of Nazareth. But Nazareth, uh, among all the cities of the Roman Empire, it was it was uh, one of the you know backward cities. So the moment you said Nazareth and somebody's from Nazareth, uh, it it would be uh, some something to uh, you know uh, condemn or look down upon. And so that is the reason he's trying to weave Paul and Nazareth together. And he says he's a leader, ring leader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He he even tried to profane the temple. And we seized him and wanted to judge him according to our law. So notice, there is an accusation, but nothing factual. Now, they need to prove everything that they're saying. But maybe because of the culture of those times and the corruption, anyone could get away saying anything. And that's what they're trying against Paul. Yes, they, they are saying he, he stirred up dissension and that he tried to defile the temple. But what are the facts? It's not like Felix is also asking for any facts. So said all these things. Um, and for Paul, there is nobody like an orator to speak for him. He's all by himself. But thank God, you know, for the wisdom and the courage uh, that Paul has been on trial, he begins to give a defense for himself. So, you know, uh, he he starts uh, sharing, narrating. I'm not going to go over all the small details over there because, you know, we, we already know uh, that he's talking about how he came to believe in, in uh, God and how uh, he's also saying, like, Felix, I've, I have hope in God. Um, so he is trying to remind Felix, look, this, this, this is what the scriptures say. And uh, finally, we are seeing the fulfillment of those scriptures. And I have hope in what, uh, you know, these scriptures talk about. So I don't see what exactly is wrong with me. So in verse 15, he says, I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and the unjust, verse 16. This being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. So he's trying to say, look, I'm doing my best to have faith in what the scriptures say. They talk about resurrection. They give us a hope uh, and all of that. And I'm just doing my, my um, bit, you know, believing it. And I had only gone to the temple to... Um, for the purification ritual. So I didn't go there with any intention of creating a dissension. Okay. So here is the um, uh, session in front of Felix. Turtle is stating his thing and Paul stating his thing. And we can later on see uh, when we come back, you know, how, what Felix does, you know, whether he takes a comment or not, and, uh, you know, how the case actually proceeds. So, uh, let's go for a break, 10 minutes, and uh, we shall come back after that. <laughs> 